if his love isn't real, then Ponya will turn into sea foam. That is where we all originated. Studio Ghibli's Ponyo is, above all, a love letter to the environment, and a call to action for all of us to start taking responsibility for the natural world. We must be careful not to upset the balance of nature. Like many of our culture's mermaid narratives, which typically descend in part from Hans Christian Andersen's Little Mermaid, the film from Hayao Miyazaki involves a water-dwelling creature falling in love with a human, and the two figuring out how to maintain that relationship, either on land or in the sea. Ponyo loves Sosuke! I will be a human too! But in most of these other narratives, this love is often a romantic sexual connection. I mean, I, I lay my eggs, then I leave, and you release your fertilizer. Why couldn't she be the other kind of mermaid, with the fish part on top and the lady part on the bottom? Ponyo instead focuses on a more innocent and deeper love between children and the love between them is representative of Sosuke's respectful devotion to the environment. Here's our take on how Ponyo's depiction of pure love gives us a blueprint for how to care for the world that is our home. You're the only one who can save the planet. Do it now! Do it! If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. From the very start of Ponyo, we're shown that the natural world, and specifically the ocean, is under threat due to humanity's behaviors. Ponyo is introduced to Sosuke after she gets stuck in a glass jar that has littered the ocean, and he breaks her free. You are alive! The sea is filled with so much pollution that it needs to be constantly monitored by Ponyo's father, anxious Fujimoto. All this waste, filth. Most of the human adults in the film pay little attention to this damage. You are so disgusting. Lisa is so busy with her job at the senior center and with looking after Sosuke that she doesn't register Fujimoto as anything more than an annoying oddball. Hopefully that spritzing weirdo is gone. Whew. She is too overstretched to have awareness of the environment around her, like when she fails to notice the sentient waves that Ponyo is riding to get her and Sosuke's attention. The fish are following us now! Turn around, sit down! In these small moments, we see how Sosuke is more tuned into the environment than she is, while Lisa's adult world has pulled her away from that mentality of engaging with and being perceptive to nature. The fact that the adults in the film are so oblivious puts the fate of the world on Sosuke's shoulders. His village literally depends on his love for Ponyo. If Sosuke's love is true, Ponyo will be permanently transformed and the balance of nature will be restored. Ponyo is a representation of the ocean world, and so Sosuke's relationship with her can be interpreted as a relationship with nature, one that is drastically different from how most adults treat the Earth. What do you know about humans, Brunhilde? They spoil the sea. They treat your home like they're empty black souls. While the adults' interactions with the environment are steeped in fear, ah! Hurry up! Put it back in the ocean! Don't you realize it'll cause a tsunami? Or annoyance, I want to go back to my own house. Sosuke and Ponyo approach everything with genuine wonder. Wow, that one's really huge. That's Devin Incus. Devin Incus. Sosuke's love for the ocean is also influenced by the fact that his father spends most of his time working on a ship. It's understandable that Lisa sometimes resents her husband's absence. Go ahead, abandon your wife and child up here on a cliff all alone. But Sosuke is clearly proud of his father and has formed a special bond with the sea as a result. That's my dad. He's the captain of the ship. Meanwhile, Ponyo's parents literally are the ocean, and together they represent its duality. Fujimoto, who used to be a human, has an innate distrust for members of his former species, including Sosuke. She's now a little girl, and she loves a little boy, and the whole world is out of balance. But the goddess of mercy, a pure magical and powerful force, has faith that Sosuke is strong enough to take on the responsibility, and that his love for Ponyo is genuine. Often, depictions of nature show it to be either life-giving and nurturing. All around you are spirits, child. They live in the earth, the water, the sky. If you listen, they will guide you. Or something that we should be cautious and fearful of. You have to respect the sea. <laughs> Here, through the dual personalities of Ponyo's mother and father, the film is clear that it can be both at the same time. The more we take from nature, the more destructive it becomes. 
and Sosuke's harbor town has clearly been abusing a one-sided relationship. But if we adopt a mutual connection like the one Sosuke has with Ponyo, in which we care for nature while also learning from it, we can keep the world in balance. In Miyazaki's own words, the most important thing, I think, is that even within such an environment, children grow up, they learn to love, and they enjoy living in that environment. As an older person, Fujimoto expresses his love for the environment through fear and anger because he has lost hope for humankind's ability to save it. This is the purest ocean water, and it keeps me from drying out on land. But young Sosuke and Ponyo are both fearless. They tackle obstacles head-on, work together, and offer us a new model for handling man-made destruction, one which empowers the audience, regardless of age, to play their part, and shows us how potentially world-changing it is to love the environment. No matter what, I will protect you. I promise. The love that Ponyo and Sosuke have for each other is the definition of unconditional. From the moment Sosuke meets Ponyo, he is determined to take care of her, inadvertently putting forward an interesting definition of love. I saved her. She's my responsibility now. That because he saved her, this makes him responsible for her. Their connection is so strong that Sosuke is able to recognize her when she transforms into a human. It's me, Ponyo! It is you! Ponyo reciprocates towards Sosuke by offering him her magic, to heal the cut on his hand, to transform and find her way back to him, and to transform his toy boat into a real one. Wow! You even made the candle bigger! We can fit! This is fantastic! The strength and authenticity of their love can best be understood through the Greek idea of philia love, which is more like friendship, defined by Jenna Birch as a connection akin to that of soulmates, one part destiny, another part choice. Usually in mermaid stories, the love depicted is closer to what the ancient Greeks termed eros, a sexual romantic attraction. Uh, it's about three o'clock already. I really have to get back to work. You are wonderful. Even when the stories are for children. Writer and director Hayao Miyazaki has confirmed that the original Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen was among his inspirations for the film. However, that story is actually a portrait of inequality. She's like a piece of property to him. Featuring a one-sided dynamic that ultimately ends with the mermaid sacrificing herself for the prince. In Disney's adaptation, which Miyazaki said he purposely didn't watch close to the time when he was making Ponyo, Ariel likewise courts her prince Eric by being extremely submissive, not even being able to speak and appearing totally dependent on him. Gee, you must have really been through something. Don't worry. Don't worry, I'll help you. By contrast, the relationship that develops between Ponyo and Sosuke is an equal partnership throughout. You take that in, please. Okay. Ready? Let's go! Uh! They are both eager to combine their strengths and work together to navigate the world. It's working! This elevation of other kinds of love besides Eros doesn't stop at Philia. Lisa's love for Sosuke and then Ponyo is a great example of the Greek term storge, which defines the love we have for family. Ah, you are so ah. good! <laughs> the love that both Lisa and Sosuke have for the old people at the senior center is illustrative of agape, defined as more of an empathetic, altruistic kind of love. What do we have here? There's one for you too, Noriko. Thank you, Sosuke. In showing these different forms of connection and almost entirely ignoring Eros, Ponyo challenges the traditional hierarchy of love that values sexualized romantic love above everything else. Miyazaki has spoken about this directly, saying, I've become skeptical of the unwritten rule that just because a boy and a girl appear in the same feature, a romance must ensue. Rather, I want to portray a slightly different relationship, one where the two mutually inspire each other to live, if I'm able to, then perhaps I'll be closer to portraying a true expression of love. It's a big responsibility, but I really love her. The film also shows that the feeling of being in love isn't reserved for adults, but rather is something that comes to children naturally as they begin to become cognizant of their environment. Overall, this portrayal of love can make us think more deeply about what loving our Earth really means, caring for it unconditionally, holding ourselves responsible for its safety and bringing a zealous joy to appreciating its wonders. Could you love her if she moved between two worlds? Mm-hmm. I love all the Ponyos.
You're, you're Lisa's little boy, aren't you? He's not a little boy. He's Sosuke. Sosuke's journey in Ponyo mirrors a traditional coming-of-age narrative, but for early childhood. You're only five, but you're very smart. Sometimes we take a leap. Like Ponyo, other children's films about growing up often find creative ways to represent transformation. In Brave, Merida transforming her mother into a bear works as a metaphor for her asserting her own independence as she moves from adolescence into adulthood. So I I'll just tell them the wedding's off then. In Wolfwalkers, the rebellious Robin's move into adolescence is signaled by her turning into a wolf after she's fallen asleep. Learn how to be a wolf first. Come on. Why do you want to be a human? Being a wolf is way better. I'll show you. And in another Ghibli classic, My Neighbor Totoro, the environment where Satsuki and Mei discover Totoro seems to exist on a threshold between one world and another, which again acts as a metaphor for their passage from one phase of life to the next. Sosuke is slightly younger than the average coming-of-age protagonist. Instead of being on the verge of adolescence, he is on the cusp between a passive baby and a more active child. Hey, my son is working the signal all by himself! Can you believe that? Though he is only five, Sosuke is eager to assert his authority, and even interprets his relationship with Ponyo as a job. You're not Bivy, you're five. I am too, I have a job. According to Amy Morin, five is around the age when many children learn the difference between right and wrong, become more self-sufficient, and start to build independent relationships with other children. Sosuke practices these skills through his relationship with Ponyo, and we see Ponyo herself going through similar stages as she mirrors the human she comes into contact with. Whoa, there's a boat! Her transformation is also more literal, with her father begging her to remain an innocent little fish instead of growing legs, hands, and independence. Stop it! Stop it! Stop changing now! Revert. The film highlights just how profound Sosuke's and Ponyo's coming-of-age experience is when they meet the family on the boat and come into contact with somebody younger than them. My baby likes you. The baby is still passive and helpless, in stark contrast to how active and energetic the older kids are, taking charge of their adventure. Oh. Ponyo! Ponyo and Sosuke thrive under the weight of these new responsibilities. Ponyo, you be the boat's lookout. And I'll do the steering, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm the lookout! They are rarely overwhelmed by even the major, terrifying obstacles they face, like being away from their family, being caught in a raging storm, it's raining so hard, Sosuke. I'll call your mother and have her pick you up. That's all right. I'll take the shortcut. Or encountering the aftermath of the tsunami. There is a huge level of respect given to the kids in the film, and a clear belief that they are equipped to take on serious responsibilities. I'm busy. I have a job to do now. Check the park. The senior should be there by now. Good luck, kid. Esther Wachiski, the mother of three very successful children, including the CEOs of YouTube and 23andMe, writes in How to Raise Successful People that offering children this trust and independence, values which typically aren't prioritized in paranoid, schedule-obsessed modern parenting, is crucial to letting them reach their full potential. When you trust kids, and when they rise to the occasion, they then trust themselves. Ponyo's attitude toward children is also reflective of Hayao Miyazaki's own belief that children are inheritors of historical memory from previous generations. Those are ancient fish. They lived during the Devonian Age. I know that one. It's Bothriocephalus. At one point, Sosuke expresses fear because he can't find his mom. And Ponyo is asleep, but when Ponyo wakes up and they resume their journey together, he is once again able to be stronger and more protective. Don't let go of my hand. By the film's end, all of the adults in his life have accepted that he can take on the weight of his responsibilities, and he's eager to do so. All of this serves to send the message that not only are children our future, but they also need to be trusted and empowered if we want to prepare them for the perils that await our planet. Environmentalism is a common theme across Studio Ghibli films, which typically also include this hope that the next generation will be our way through the climate crisis. In Princess Mononoke, the young prince Ashitaka works to try and resolve the relationship between the humans and the forest spirits. What I want is for the humans and the forest to live in peace! 
And in Pompoko, the fourth wall breaks down at the end of the film, demanding that the audience consider the way urban development harms animals. Animals are disappearing because of development. Ponyo asserts that the younger and future generations have been forced to bear the burden of caring for a struggling natural environment, but also that they do contain the knowledge and power to handle it. I'm getting the hang of this! Proving the movie right, only a little over a decade after the film's release, kids like Mari Kopini, Greta Thunberg, Autumn Pelche, and countless others have been leading campaigns addressing climate change all over the globe. My generation has, has made a mess of things. I mean, we have to make major changes to the way we live. And that's why you've, you've done such a lot. But that's not meant to let the older generations off the hook or to underestimate the huge amount of radical change needed by people in power to combat climate change now. If Sasuke's pure love for Ponyo taught us anything, it's that we're responsible for what we love. And we all have a role to play in caring for the environment. Life is mysterious and amazing, but we have work to do now. This is The Take on your favorite movie shows and culture. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. Please subscribe and never miss a take.